Hi guys and welcome to 123myIT. In this video we will show you everything you need to know about the Apple MacBook Pro M1. I gotta say right off the bat, I'm not a Mac fan, but this MacBook Pro has me surprised and impressed. On the outside, the design of the Apple MacBook Pro M1 has not changed from the previous model. However, the biggest change is on the inside of the Mac. It's the M1 chip that is custom designed by Apple. Previously, a Mac needed multiple chips to deliver its features. Now, all those chips are rolled into one SOC, which basically means that it's faster and more efficient. The new chip allows the MacBook Pro to perform better and run longer on battery than its Intel-based predecessors. Pricing for the MacBook Pro M1 starts around $1299 USD for the 256GB SSD model and goes all the way up to $2299 USD for the 2TB model. And it comes in two different colours, space grey and silver. After using the 256GB model, I found the upgrade to 512 is probably worthwhile as I started having disk space issues after installing the Fortnite game, which requires about 90GB. I started to wish I had the extra space, so this might be something you would consider when you're buying the MacBook Pro. In the box you will get warranty and setup documentation, along with some Apple stickers. Also included is a 61 watt USB 4 power adapter. When charging, the MacBook draws 61 watts of power, and you can expect around 20 hours of battery life, which is just outstanding. Next you will have the MacBook Pro itself, the MacBook Pro M1 comes with a 13.3 inch LED backlit retina display with IPS technology and a resolution of 2560 by 1600 with 500 nits of brightness. True Tone technology also adds a warmer, more realistic color to the display. In terms of how heavy the MacBook Pro is, it's 3 pounds, which is slightly heavier than the MacBook Air on 2.8 pounds. In regards to dimensions, it's 0.61 inches high and 11.97 inches wide. On the left hand side you have two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. I would like to see three as one can be taken up with a power adapter. There's also no Ethernet, which means that this model is Wi-Fi only. The USB 4 also doubles as a display port, so if you have a USB 4 to HDMI adapter, you can plug in an external display. On the right hand side you have a 3.5 headphone jack and there is no SD card reader which I get it you can buy an Apple adapter if you need that however it does feel limited in terms of connectivity. The MacBook Pro M1 has stereo speakers with high dynamic range. They sit both sides of the keyboard and are designed to point upwards towards your ears. The speakers have the best sound that I've heard on any laptop so far. They are truly amazing. Take a listen. Also, let me know what you think in the comments field below. Above the keyboard you have the touch bar. This allows you to control whatever app is on your screen at the time. So for example, if I wanted to fast forward or rewind the YouTube song, I can do that easily by touching the touch bar. Or if I wanted to turn the volume up and down. The backlit Magic Keyboard is a delight to type on and does not bend when pressing the keys. And there is very little flex on the keyboard too, which is nice. The Force Touch trackpad is nice and wide and I never find myself missing a click or having to click twice. Another nice feature is the MacBook Pro has this always on feature when you open the lid. Just like your iPhone, it's ready to go. Along the top you will find an integrated 720p FaceTime HD camera with an indicator light. I would like to see a button to manually close the webcam. It's a nice to have feature for the security conscious. The overall build is excellent quality, 
but the display hinge does not fold all the way back 180 degrees. However, other laptops go all the way back to 180 degrees, so it feels a little bit awkward. Now for the amazing part. I was able to get Fortnite to run really well, giving up about 50 to 70 frames per second on high settings. And when I dropped it back to low settings, I was getting about 130 to 140 frames. So much better performance from a gaming side of things. Having said that, Fortnite did crash on me once, and I'm not sure whether that was down to the MacBook hardware being so new or a bug with the Fortnite software itself. At any rate, it's a great result in terms of gaming performance for Fortnite. Cool, let's run the benchmarks real quick and I will show you the fan noise. So starting the Cinebench software, it really works the MacBook Pro hard and you can hear the fan spinning, it's actually quite loud. To be fair, the room temperature was quite warm at 30 degrees. One thing to mention though, is the MacBook Pro does have a fan while the MacBook Air does not. So you won't get any fan noise from the MacBook Air. Here's the Cinebench multi-core score, which is 7795 points. And if you look at the CPU's ranking, it's actually pretty good for a laptop. Here's the Geekbench CPU score and the GPU score. Let's run the GFX Bench Metal Tool. Alright, so as you can see here, the MacBook Pro M1 scored an average of 55.4 frames. So it's not outstanding, but it's a good result. The MacBook Pro M1 is aimed for people who are doing a lot of video editing or graphic design work. This laptop is amazing for that type of workload. Plus, it's very portable. For those that want to know if they should buy the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro, I would say that if you're a student and just learning some video editing or graphic design, go for the MacBook Air. If you are professional or semi-professional, then go for the MacBook Pro. However, if you want to see the MacBook Air review and comparison, then subscribe to my channel and I will have both of these videos coming up after this one.